glad to be here today. Hallelujah. Come sing with us as we sing. We've come this far by faith.
Good morning, beloved, and welcome to the worship experience of the Oak Grove Baptist Church here in Sterling, Virginia. I am Pastor Gregory L. Spurlock. I am the senior servant of God who has been blessed with the awesome task of being able to serve this congregation and community for the past 10 years. We are so excited. We're very delighted to be able to be in your presence Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes that we might be able to fellowship one with the other. My brother, my sister, beloved of God, while I have your time as well as your attention, if you could do us, amen, a great big favor, go ahead and like as well as share this video while I have your time and attention. Please do that for us. Like as well as share this video because there's power in sharing. Amen. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we all should rejoice and be glad in it. For the Lord our God is truly worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. The Lord's name is definitely worthy to be praised. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Amen. And let's give God some glory in your homes right where you are let's give him a great big hallelujah and as we do we start off with our gathering statement beloved and our gathering statement is coming to you uh, this morning amen from psalm 138 first couple of verses if you will of psalm 138 and here you find these words recorded i'm reading from the new living translation and the word of God reads as such with, with regards to our gathering statement. It says, I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. And I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. For your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. Praise the Lord. Amen. You will, as some version will read, you will magnify amen your word above your name and we thank you lord for your word let us pray father it is in jesus name that we come on this blessed and glorious morning to come and worship your holy and your righteous name have your way lord in this worship experience touch Every worshiper that's gathered with us, that will come in contact with us. Bless, oh God, our praise team and bless our musicians. Oh God, we thank you for every worshiper that's taking part. We thank you for our AV sound team and our technicians who have given themselves to make this come into fruition. We thank you most of all, God, for your darling and dear son, Jesus the Christ. He who shall be magnified and glorified in our midst. He who shall be lifted up, honored and adored in our midst. He, O oh God, who is our suffering Savior and our soon coming King. He who has made a way out of no way for us. We thank you, God, for all that has transpired thus far and all that you will continue to do in our midst. Have your way, God, and we shall be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise because you're worthy. It is in Jesus' name that we do humbly pray and we claim and count and consider all of these things done. Might the redeem of God's people say amen, amen, and amen. Strength. 
strength like no other reaches to me. You are my strength. That's it. Strength like no other. Strength like no Praise God for our praise team for ministering to the glory of God on this morning and being a blessing to us in this worship encounter. Beloved, we've come to a point in our service, and not that where everybody can take a part, because we know that you, are ha you have already taken a part uh, from the beginning even up till now. But we come to bring our gifts to the Lord. It is time for us to come and bring our gifts to the Lord. It is offering time. Amen. Freely we have received and freely we must give. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. For the Bible declared that God loves a cheerful giver. 
And we consider this place here at Oak Grove to be fertile ground. So we thank you for every seed that shall and will be sown into this fertile ground that we shall be able to reap a harvest. At this time, we're going to have our video presentation for our appeal for our tithes and offering. Oak Grove family, the power of God is moving in our lives collectively and individually. Never underestimate what the power of sowing a seed of faith can do. We declare as a church body that you are seeing the miraculous throughout your bloodline, in your physical, mental, emotional, and financial spaces. To sow a seed of faith into good fertile ground as we continue to do ministry, please consider giving in the following ways. You can mail to 22870 Dominion Lane, Sterling, Virginia. Use our PayPal link, paypal.me slash OGBC Sterling. Cash app using the cash tag dollar sign Oak Grove Sterling. Or search us up with the GiveLify app, Oak Grove Baptist Church in Sterling, Virginia. We appreciate you worshiping with us through giving. How many of you out there that know that we serve an awesome, yeah, awesome yeah. God? Yes, yes. Awesome. And he can awesome. move all of those mountains that we believe that are in front of us and make them behind us. Because he's just that mighty. Yes, he is.
Beloved, it is preaching time. Amen. It is preaching time. We are so grateful uh, for this opportunity to be able to stand before you and to, and to declare the unsearchable riches of our God. It is preaching time. Before we move into preaching, let us uh, pray. Uh, amen. That God will have its way. Father, it is once again in Jesus name that we come. And. As I stand behind this sacred desk, I ask, O oh, Savior, teach me to abide close and sheltered at your loving side. Each hour, I have been blessed to receive your grace on top of grace. And oh, how I long to see you one day face to face. This hour has come where I can stand on your promises and stand on your word and ask you to have your way with me as I declare your unsearchable riches. Speak to me, Lord, and speak through me. Let the words of my mouth to include the meditation of my heart. Allow it to be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my strength and my redeemer. That, O oh God, that has been prepared and been used to be a manuscript and outline to preach from. As the Holy Spirit will give utterance, if it's not on paper, Feed me, God, that you would have your way, that I can minister on your behalf to be a blessing to your people for a time such as this. For it is in the mighty and the marvelous, the matchless, the miraculous, the magnificent and majestic name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord, I do humbly pray. Might the redeem of God's people say amen, amen, and amen again. Beloved, turn with me in your Bibles, if you don't mind, to the gospel according to John Mark. The gospel according to John Mark. The gospel according to St. Mark. And in the first chapter, beginning at verse number 35, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation of God's Holy Word. You find these words recorded before you. The word of God reads as such. Before daybreak, the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus replied, we must 
go on to the other towns as well. And I will preach to them too. That is why I came. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in synagogues and casting out demons. Beloved, with the dynamic aid and the diligent assistance to include the divine anointing of the Holy Spirit, I, I want to, for the next few minutes that I have to share with you, I want to put a tag on this text, and I want to preach from the subject in title. Using verse number 38, and uh, using that, that B clause there. And it says, that is why I came. I want to preach from the subject entitled The Weight That Comes With Your Why. The Weight That Comes With Your Why. Beloved, In this rich gospel written by Mark, and I've preached chapter one and chapter two over the course of my 25 years of pastoring, 27 preaching, I've, uh, I've preached several times from this passage, but today is, is very unique because I never grabbed hold to that B clause in verse 38. Maybe it was because of the translation that I was reading I, but it it gripped me and I can say that the reason why it gripped me is because I recently came across a devotional written by a gentleman by the name of Paul Bain and Matt Litton, L-I-T-T-O-N, Litton. And I came across this devotional. It's a devotional that coincide, coincides with uh, Lent, the season of Lent. And I'm preparing myself as, as I move into this period of Lenten, the season of Lenten. And this book is a 40-day devotional, and it's called In the Presence of Jesus. And I, I, I read the introduction, and because and, I'm going to start on next Actually, I'm going to start on Wednesday the 2nd as Ash Wednesday would, would, would kick off the season of Lent. But I've read the, the necessary parts on how this devotional is, is going to work and the introduction. And I, I became fascinated with it because it talks about in the presence of Jesus. Uh, it's a it's a contemplative guide to help us to be in his presence 
in such a way that we can block out all of the chaos and all of the chatter and the noise and that we can be in the presence of Jesus and focus on the Savior and not let the things on the peripheral cause us to be drawn away when we're in his presence. And when I thought about this, when I, when I, when I was reading the intro and when I was getting myself in the mindset for this 40-day journey uh, that I will embark upon, It took me to literally this scripture. And when I saw those words in the B clause of verse 38, it says, that is why I came. And when I read that and I went back to verse 35, it hit me. It gripped me. That when we want to get close to the Lord, we need to block out some stuff so that we can really be at one with the master. And he, Jesus says, that is why I came. That is why I came. He, he basically says, my purpose for coming is to be able to reach people through the preaching ministry to help them to become a better them. And when you look at in chapter one how Mark lays this thing out, it it causes you to pause for a second and be like, wow. Look at God and how he uses our Savior. Because Jesus was on a, on a divine assignment. And Jesus says, that is why I came. Jesus says, literally, my purpose for coming has weight behind it. And the weight that comes with his why. He lets it be known that I came. So that I can make a difference in the lives of these people. Who I will minister to. So when, when I looked at this, this small portion of the pericope. The Bible says before daybreak. The next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. I want to suggest to you, beloved, a couple of things, three, three quick things, and, I, and I'll let you have the rest of your day. One, the weight that comes with your why. One will pull you. It will pull you. The weight that comes with your why will pull you. I will say that the weight that comes with your why will stretch you. It's going to pull you. It's going to stretch you. See, because Jesus says that is, that is why I came. He says, I got to go and preach. 
But as he was preaching, he was also ministering throughout the Galilean region. He preached beginning around verse 14. The Bible tells us later on John who was the Baptist. John the Baptist was arrested and Jesus went into Galilee where he preached God's good news. And the time promised by God has come at last. He announced the kingdom of God is near. And Jesus says, repent of your sins and believe the good news, the gospel. Believe Jesus is preaching. He's trying to reach. Not only is he preaching, but he's also extending the call. He's commissioning these brothers, extending the call for them to come and serve alongside with him, to leave fishing. Let them know that the fishing that you're going to do is not going to be the fishing for the consumption, but you're going to be fishing for men to be able to... Uh, be compelled to this good news that I've been preaching. And then the word tells us that he's preaching. He's extending the call to serve. And then he's also teaching. The Bible lets us know right around verse 21 that Jesus goes into the synagogue. He's in Capernaum. And he's in the synagogue. And he's teaching, beloved in the synagogue and while he's teaching there's a man that's in the synagogue who's possessed by an evil spirit and he cries out saying Jesus of Nazareth don't come and destroy me leave me alone because I know that you are the holy one of God and Jesus reprimands him and tells him be quiet tells the spirit to come out of the man and the spirit leaves the man. Jesus is, is teaching and he's also commanding evil spirits to get their act together because there's a new sheriff in town. And you're not going to be doing business as usual. Jesus, he's, he's being stretched, he's being pulled. And the weight that comes with your why will pull you. Your purpose will stretch you. It will, it will cause you to, to be able to be multifaceted. It will stretch you. It will pull you. You'll multitask when it comes to the weight of your why. The word says that Jesus went to to Peter's uh, house and Peter's mother-in-law was there and she was sick and then Jesus healed her because she had a fever. Jesus healed her and in the midst of all that when you deal with people people will exhaust you. Jesus was exhausted. He, he's been ministering. Preaching, he's been teaching, he's extending the call, he's dealing with uh, evil spirits, and then he's also healing. He spent. Ministry will cause you to be spent, it will pull you, it will stretch you. And Jesus gives us the example that even when ministry will pull or stretch you, that you have to get your rest. You can be there for people, but you also have to be reminded that you have to also take care of yourself. Here we are in COVID. Two years later, people are going through so much. People need a word from the Lord. People need to be encouraged. People need to be ministered unto. People need to know that there's a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. 
But in the midst of all that, people need to take a rest. Jesus, the Bible tells us in verse 35, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up, went out to an isolated place. He had to get away. He had to get away. He had to get away. He had been pulled. He had been stretched. And he needed that opportunity to just be able to recharge. So the weight that comes with your why will pull you. But the weight that comes with your why will also posture you. What are you saying, Pastor? Yes, the weight ministry is weighty. It will pull you, but it will also posture you. Jesus the Bible says Jesus got, got up, went out to an isolated place, and he postured himself in prayer. The weight that comes with your why will cause you to be in a posture of prayer. Jesus demonstrates to us that when you minister, you need to get away, go into an isolated place, block out everything, and get in the presence of the master. And pray. Prayer recharges, it rejuvenates. Prayer makes a difference in the life of those that you are praying for. Prayer causes the miraculous to manifest in a situation that seems to be hopeless. And that that is hopeless gains hope. Prayer weaves its way into your personal context when you feel like that you cannot do anything on your own to make the situation better but prayer can make it better Jesus postures himself the weight that comes with your why it will pull you it will posture you how many of you know that when, when you are in prayer and when you've completed your prayer and when you've gone into your prayer closet and you've been zapped of your energy and you've been beaten by the vicissitudes of life and by the time you finish praying, you feel so much better. You feel invigorated. You feel like Eddie Kane, who was in the five heartbeats, after all that Eddie Kane had gone through, and Eddie was at church. When Duck came to see choir boy and Eddie Kane was singing, I feel like going on. That's what prayer will do for you. It'll cause you to feel like going on. Though trials come on every hand, I feel like going on. That's because the posture of prayer causes you to feel invigorated to know that even though you've been pulled even though you've been stretched and when people interfere because look Jesus went to an isolated place to become intimate with his father 
And while he's being intimate with his father, while being in an isolated place, he gets interference because Peter says, the others, Peter and the others came and found him and says, everyone is looking for you. Jesus is in this place, isolated, got away. He's isolated, and yet he's getting intimate with his father, and Peter interferes. People are looking for you. You've been pulled. You've been stretched. You've been ministered. People are still looking for you. Jesus, in the midst of being interfered, the Bible tells us that he gets up. He says, look, we've been in Galilee, but you know what? We need to go to the other towns too. Because the good news that I've been preaching, the good news that I've been teaching, the good news in terms of with me calling out demons, I got to go to the other towns as well and I have to preach to them too because that is why I came oh I heal I cast out demons but I also came to preach to God's people See, the weight that comes with your why, it will pull you, it will posture you, but it will also promote your purpose. It will promote you because it promotes his purpose. Jesus says, that is why I came. We must go to other towns and I will preach to them too. In addition to everything that I've done, that's the reason why I came, to preach to them. God will promote your why despite how heavy the weight might be. What are you trying to tell us? He, he will prepare you to be able to promote your why despite the heaviness that comes with lifting the purpose or your why. Love it. He says, I, I got to go. I got to preach. I got to preach to them too. This thing is for everybody. And we can't, we can't just be territorial and isolated to one, if you will, group of individuals or one region. We need to get this thing out to everybody. The weight that comes with your why. Oh, it pulls, it postures, but it will promote the purpose for what it is intended to. And beloved, I need you to understand in this 2022 year, oh, there's a weight. There's a weight, beloved that comes with the why. But I'm reminded that the Hebrew writer wrote, he told us to just lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. Because when you lay aside the weight, you can place your trust in Jesus. And he will give you what you need in order to be able to navigate and be successful. To be able to promote your why. To show others that you are for real when it comes to what your why is all about. So I want to encourage you beloved to not get weary in your well doing. Because you shall reap. You shall reap that just reward. 
Just know that while you are promoting your why, and when things might get a little tough or rough, and whereas you might get pulled in all sorts of direction, just know that you have the ability to go to your quiet place and you can call on the name of Jesus. And he can, he can, yes he can, he can encourage you and he can strengthen you and he will support you to let you know that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And he will give you what you need to have to promote your why. Because this good news is for everybody. And with everything that's going on in our world, we want to be in the posture of prayer to be able to lift up our brothers and sisters, yes, in Ukraine with uh, a dictator that's acting foolish. We need to lift up the people in Ukraine and let them know that they're not out there by themselves and that the weight with being attacked, God will give them what they need to still be successful and victorious. Uh, the weight that comes with your why, God will promote you despite what folk will say about you. God will promote your purpose to let folk know that this why is so important. That he will not let anything or anyone stand in the way of this purpose. Because when it's all said and done, God's going to get the glory out of this. So hang in there. Don't give up. Stay in the race. And watch God move successfully to help you navigate your why. Because your why places you on the trajectory of fulfilling your purpose. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for this preaching privilege and opportunity. There are many who are weighted down with purpose. They've been pulled. They've allowed themselves to get in the position to be postured. To seek direction from you. And through seeking you, God. Glory to God. You have allowed the purpose to be promoted. To let them know that the good news of Christ, the good news can help them in their situation. And that they can Continue to go on. God, touch, heal, and deliver. Set those who are the captives free. Bless every man, woman, boy, or girl that's out there. Touch those who may not know you in the pardon of their sin, and I extend to them the invitation to come and give their lives to Jesus. That he can be the savior of their soul and the Lord of their life. If they've never been baptized. We extend that invitation to come and be baptized. If there's that man, woman, boy or girl that's out there. That's in Christ but not in a church. We extend the invitation to them to come. And join us through Christian experience. Be a part of a place. That has the weight of the cross upon its purpose. That we're going to 
declare the good news and teach it? Minister to be able to help those who need it the most so that they can have a relationship with you, God, by entering into it, by saying yes to your will, your way, and your word, and saying yes to the fact that your son gave his life. And they can accept what he did on Calvary. To know that their relationship is intact with you. Thank you Lord for this preaching opportunity on today. Keep us till we meet again. For it is in the mighty. And the marvelous name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We do humbly pray. And we claim victory for the saints of God. Amen. Beloved thank you. For being a part of this worship experience on today. Again, happy African-American History Month. We know that on tomorrow is the last day of this month. But hey, as I indicated before, African-American history, black history, 24-7, 365. Look, we'll see you again on next week. Thanks for coming. Be blessed. Enjoy the week ahead that God has in store for you. And we look forward to being with you again on next week. Be blessed. Peace. Come on, let's praise it. I just want to praise you for it.